Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at combining an output module from Lightroom into InDesign to create an interactive portfolio for your tablet, for your iPad or for your Android tablet. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now I'm in Lightroom, which I like to call the my photography universe. This is where all my pictures live all the time and I use Lightroom as my hub to get out to everything else, including the web. My entire photography website is actually built from Lightroom with the help of the Turning Gate. The Turning Gate is a company that makes plugins for photographers for Lightroom that extend or go beyond what Lightroom's web capabilities can do. And one of their newer plugins is actually called Photo Swipe. And this particular plugin is a gallery designed to help you create a mobile-friendly website or gallery so that people can actually use their fingers to swipe through your photos. So I thought, why not combine those two? Why not combine the power of Lightroom, exporting out via photo swipe, to uh, a, you know a folder with a web gallery as HTML, and then import that into InDesign to create an interactive tablet application, or at least part of it. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to InDesign. And now we're going to go ahead and create our new document. And, and now keep in mind, I'm just going to create the simple gallery. Your document can be multiple pages. It could be, um, you know, a description of your photography business. It could be all kinds of things in addition to what we're going to do here. We're just going to talk, take a look at how to create the gallery itself. Feel free to ad lib or add as many more things to it as you want. So we're going to create our document. And of course, since we're targeting tablet, we want to switch in design from print to web. And we're going to say that we want it to be tall and we want it to be uh, 1024 by 768. Actually, let's make the wide version first. And we don't really need margins in this case, so we'll set those to zero. And of course, we're dealing with one page in this case for our creative gallery. So we'll click OK, and then design will create that one page for us. Now keep in mind, like I said, anything else you want to design on this page, Feel free to place your logo, your address, your URL, whatever you want people to see, background images, however you want this page to look. But just for the purpose of how to tie this all together with the output that we did from Lightroom, I'm just going to go ahead and make uh, a simple frame that covers the entire page. And again, you, if you want your frame to be smaller and put some things on the side or the top or the bottom, then you would all, by all means do that. Now, I've got this this container here which is going to load the gallery. That's all it is, just one big frame for the entire page. Now if we go back to Lightroom, what I did ahead of time was I used the Turning Gates Photo Swipe Gallery with one of my collections. I designed it basically to look the way I want with all of the settings here in the gallery itself, all your CSS, all your HTML settings, where you want your logo, things like that. This is all part of the gallery. Once I did all those things, I just simply clicked export, picked the location on my hard drive, and it basically created a, an HTML folder containing this gallery, all the thumbnails, all the images, all the CSS, everything ready to go. Now that I've done that, and now that I'm in InDesign with this big page, with this one big frame on it, all I have to do is go to my overlay creator, and I'm going to choose web content with that frame selected. Now this is where if you wanted the person to get a live view of your website, then you just put in your URL and you're done. But in this case, I want this to be able to work offline. That's why I exported the gallery out from Lightroom. So we're just going to go ahead and choose the gallery. And uh, I created one called Creative Swipe. There's the folder that Lightroom exported using the Turning Gate plugin. I'm just going to grab the main index.html page. And now InDesign, as far as it's, it's concerned, will load that page. Now I'm going to, one important thing you definitely want to do is you want to be able to, to have the user see it the minute, the minute they go to this page in your publication. So you're going to say autoplay. So that means the minute they load this, uh, this page or this application up, it will autoplay your gallery uh, directly on the page. Okay, now, if you wanted to preview it as it is now, you could go ahead and click Preview, and that will load up the Desktop Content Viewer. And there it is. There is my 
web gallery that I can click on. I can, uh, I have to click done here in the content viewer, but I can swipe between the pictures and basically it's working as an interactive web gallery just that easily. That's all I had to do. Now when I click, I believe there's an option to go uh, at the bottom here to go and close the gallery, but of course for screen real estate I can't get to it. But we'll see it on the actual tablet in just a moment. Alright, so now I've built that and we want to go ahead and of course save this page. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And we're going to just go ahead and create a new one, a new folder here. We're just going to call this uh, Creative Portfolio. That will be the name of the folder. And in that folder, we've got this horizontal document. We're just going to call it Creative underscore H so that we know that's the horizontal version. So we'll save that. We can leave it open. We don't have to close it right now because now we're going to build a vertical version. And again, you don't have to build a horizontal and a vertical. You can build one or the other, but it has to be consistent throughout your entire publication. They either all have to be horizontal, all have to be vertical, or they all have to be both. You can't mix and match. So we're going to go ahead and say new document once again. This will be the vertical version of our uh, portfolio here. I'm just going to say that it's web. It's 1024 by 768. And we're going to target, um, again, no margins. And we'll just go ahead and click OK. Oh, did I say wide? I did do that, didn't I? Let's do it one more time. New document. That was pilot error web. 1024 by 768, and we want it vertical, not horizontal. So, And by the way, I could have just turned the page instead of doing this over again. All right, so now we've got this, and we're just going to go ahead and create a new frame. And again, doing the same thing. And again, if you want to design more on the page, by all means, design more on the page. But we're going to go to our overlay creator, web content. We're just going to target that same HTML index file in the same gallery and of course make sure we say autoplay we can test it right here in the content viewer it will load the content viewer and test it once again and this is all live by the way these links will actually work as well so we'll go ahead and close that we know that our content viewer is working we will save this page and we will call this one creative underscore b for vertical because it's the vertical version of our document all right, so now that we've got both our horizontal and vertical layouts, the next thing we want to do is we want to upload this as a folio so that we can download it onto our tablet. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, close the overlay creator. And again, if you wanted more pages, keep building them, keep adding your overlays, make more galleries. This is just the mechanics of how to make this one gallery work. So we'll go to our folio builder. We're going to make a new folio, and we're going to call it Creative Portfolio. Okay, and we're just loading the Creative Portfolio. If it could, if it was the you know, all my portfolios, I might just call this Terry White's Portfolios, and it would be different pages for each one. Okay, so we've got our Creative Portfolio, and by the way, the new Folio Builder will target the high-resolution iPad, the Retina display, if that's what you're building for. But we're going to keep it simple to work on all iPads. We'll keep it 1024 by 768, and we'll say OK. Now, that's going to build a new folio, and of course, we haven't added any articles yet. The two documents are our article. So we're going to go ahead and add the open document, the one that's here, the vertical version, and then we're just going to call this Creative uh, Portfolio, again, because that's the name of this particular portfolio. And it already knows that it's portrait. So we'll go ahead and click OK. That will quickly upload the portrait version so that it's ready to go. And again, this will depend on how much content you put on the page, put videos on the page, it's going to take longer. Also dependent on your internet connection speed. All right, so the creative portfolio is loaded with the one orientation in it already for portrait. We're going to now switch to the wide version that we left open. And we'll just go ahead and add that one as well. So that way we have both orientations of our creative portfolio. And again, it's uploading this with all the HTML embedded in so that it can work offline. And that's what's taking a few seconds to do all of that HTML, all the images, so forth and so on. Okay, so it's got it in there. We'll go all the way back out to the creative portfolio. 
And now that we've uploaded our folio, there's one thing that people tend to forget to do, and that is we haven't really given the folio a title that will show up in the content viewer, nor have we given it any thumbnails that will show up in the content viewer. So let's do that. So we basically back out until we get to the main list of folios here, where we've got our creative portfolio. And then we'll use the flyout menu here, and we're going to go to properties. Now that we're in properties, this is where we give our publication name. So we can call it TWP for Terry White Photography, uh, Creative Portfolio. There we go. And the, this is where we pick up our cover previews or our thumbnails. So I went into Photoshop and basically took one of my images and simply uh, exported it out at about 100 or 200 pixel um, at the longest dimension for both vertical and horizontal. And then once I did that, I can now go in and choose those thumbnails. And let's go out to where they are here. I saved one called uh, Thumb D for vertical and another one called Thumb H for horizontal. They're PNG files or ping files. And that way we'll have something nice to look at inside the content viewer on our tablet. So we'll click OK. That will save it and up, update the content viewer. And now what we can do is actually go take a look at this on the iPad itself. So I'm going to swipe past Photoshop here, where I've got the iPad running. And we're just going to go ahead and view the Adobe Content Viewer, which is uh, second icon or first icon on the second row. Once we tap it, it will update the library, meaning it's signed in with the same uh, Adobe ID that I signed in with in InDesign, and now there is my creative portfolio that I can download. So we'll just go ahead and download that from the Adobe Cloud. I'm clicking on it on my computer. I actually need to do it on the tablet. There we go. And we'll download that uh, from the Adobe Cloud uh, down into our iPad so we can actually test this and see if it works. So again, the, the speed of which it downloads, your internet connection, and of course how much content you've got in it. So now we'll view it, and because we told it to auto-load, it auto-loaded that HTML. So now we can tap on this first picture, and that first picture will load, and we can swipe from picture to picture, just as if we were on the web or on um, a web browser looking at this. But the beauty of this is I can do this offline. So now this is actually in my iPad. I can also switch orientations, and continue swiping through my photos and show my clients, show my prospective clients uh, what my portfolio looks like, all using Lightroom to begin with, which is where my photos are always stored anyway, using a uh, turning gate plugin for to get that photo swipe kind of look and feel to the export, exporting out standard HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then linking that to InDesign or importing it into InDesign using the digital publishing suite tools and then showing it on my iPad in the free content viewer. And by the way, everything I just did, as far as the getting it to the iPad, there's no cost for that. You can have as many personal folios as you want on your devices. So if I now want to look at that on an Android tablet or a Kindle Fire, or any of the other tablets where we have the free content viewer, just load up the content viewer, sign in with the same Adobe ID, and I'm off and running at looking at my portfolio on any of my devices. I can even share that portfolio. Um, if I go back to the Folio Builder panel inside of InDesign, I can actually uh, grab any one of those folios, and there is an option to share the folio. So that means if I wanted to send this to someone to look at in the free content viewer on their device, I could. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.